Hello and welcome to another Blender tutorial. I'm Andrew Lewis and today we'll be working on part two of the quadruped rigging series. In this tutorial we'll be working on converting our forward kinematics rig into a basic inverse kinematics rig. So let's open up Blender and get started. So when we left off we had finished a basic forward kinematics rig. Since we are no longer keeping it as a forward kinematics rig we can delete the right side of the armature. We'll duplicate the finished IK rig on the left side once it's made. For this tutorial, we'll start with the front leg. The IK system controls the bones using a hierarchy, where the last bone in the chain controls the motions of the ones above it. So for the front leg, we are going to use the foot as the base for the IK setup. Select the foot bone and press Shift D to duplicate it. Then Control Alt S to scale it up a bit. This is the bone that will be used to control the IK setup for the leg. Once that's done, you can give it a name to identify it. For example, I typically put the designation IK before I add in an L or an R. Now we're ready to add in the IK constraint. Select the next bone up in the chain, which is the bottom of the leg. Make sure you are in pose mode. Then go up to the bone constraints and select inverse kinematics. For the target, we want that to be the foot IK we made earlier. You will notice that it is not on the target list. That is because it is a bone. So we must first select armature, or whatever you've named your armature, then we can select the proper bone. Now the IK for the leg is set up, though you may notice that it is going out of control a bit. First, make sure that the chain length is set properly. For the chain length, you want it set to the last bone in the hierarchy. Changing the chain length may not fix the problem. This is because the bone we are using for our IK setup still has a parent, so we need to get rid of that by selecting the IK bone and under the bone properties, delete the parent. This can also be done by pressing Alt-P on the keyboard. Now the leg should move smoothly. Next we want to add some constraints to the foot. With the primary foot bone selected, go into constraints and select copy rotation. What we want to do is use the IK bone to also control the rotation of the feet. So under target, select the IK bone. Now the next constraint is optional and is more of a convenience for the user. This next constraint will limit how far down I can move the IK bone. Select the IK bone on the foot and in the constraint select limit location. Using this constraint, we can limit the bone's movement on any axis. I'm going to limit the downward movement on the z-axis by selecting minimum z. I want to set it to a value that will give me the least amount of movement when the leg is fully extended toward the ground. I'm just going to limit it on that axis. However, you can tweak the settings yourself until the IK bone doesn't go too much beyond the armature when posing. As I said, this is mostly for your own convenience and is completely optional. Since these are simple IK fixes, we'll just repeat the process for the back leg as opposed to duplicating the leg, similar to the forward kinematics tutorial earlier. Now let's take a bit of a detour and go over the basics of spleen IK. Spleen IK involves manipulating bones with the use of a curve. This can be used to produce smoother movement in curved armatures. In this particular mesh, I'll be using it for the tail and ears. So in this example, we have an armature consisting of four bones. To get Spleen IK to work, we first need to add a curve. So using the Add menu or Shift A, we can add in a Bezier curve. In edit mode, we need to smooth out that curve by rotating it at 45 degrees until the curve is straight. By pressing A, I can select all the vertices and move them across the x-axis until the end of the curve is at the origin point. Once that is done, I can rotate it up 90 degrees to where the curve is at the center of the mesh. Now I can scale the curve until the tip is at the end of our armature. This is where a common mistake can happen. By pressing N and looking under the Transform tab, you can see the object scale. Normally, it is set to 1 on each axis. After scaling the curve, that is all messed up. 
If it is not fixed, then the spleen IK will be working according to the new scale. So to fix that, all you need to do is select Control A and apply rotation and scale. This is also found under the Object tab on the header. Apply the rotation and scale to both the armature and the curve. Now we can go into pose mode and add our spleen IK constraint. You'll notice the top bone is yellow. That is because the spleen IK constraint in this demonstration was already added, so you should not be colored. So with the top bone selected, go into Bone Constraints and select Spleen IK. For the target, we need to select our curve, so let's name it something that will identify it as the Spleen IK curve. Now under Target, select the curve. The highlighted bone should be touching the ground now, and that is fine. That just means the chain length needs to be adjusted. The length I want the Spleen IK to be consists of four bones, so I will set my chain length to be four. Also, deselect Y stretch. What this does is it allows the armature to stretch as far as the curve when it is being manipulated. As I don't want to stretch the ears during animation, I'm going to deselect Y stretch. Now, if we were to pose this using pose mode, you will notice it's not really moving. That is because Spleen IK is based off the curve, not the armature. So the armature will only move if the curve does. To manipulate the curve, we need to add in a hook. So with the curve selected, go into Edit Mode and select the vertice at the end of the armature. Now with that vertice selected, press Ctrl H and select Hook to New Object. Now if we grab and move our hook, the armature will follow. There is just one problem with this. If we were to attempt to animate the hook, we run into a problem of how to reset its location. Normally, to reset everything in Pose Mode, we would press Alt G. And what that does it, is it brings the hook to the center, similar to if you were to press Shift C for the 3D cursor. And since our armature is using Spleen IK, it will follow the curve, which essentially collapses in on itself. But there is a way around that. All we need to do is to create a bone that the hook can follow. Select the top bone with the IK constraint and Shift D to duplicate it. Now Control Alt S to scale it. This is so that we can distinguish it better amongst the other bones. Now get rid of its Spleen IK constraint because it doesn't need it. Now select the hook, then hold Shift to select the bone, and press Control P, and under Parenting Options, select Bone. Now if we go into Pose Mode and select our Control Bone, and press G just to move it around, the wild movement should be familiar is because the duplicate bone still retains its parent. All you need to do is select the bone in edit mode and press Alt P to clear the parent. Now the hook will follow the bone which will guide our armature and since it is a bone we are moving we can reset it at any time by pressing Alt R for rotation and Alt G for location. If it doesn't appear to move back to its original location just click anywhere on the timeline and it will snap back. That's pretty much it for Spleen IK now we can go ahead and apply it to our model. So back to our model. We can now begin to integrate Spleen IK into the armature. Applying it is as simple as the Spleen IK example, though with this mesh it is slightly more difficult as the ears are not exactly in an ideal position for setting up this type of rig. So with the armature selected, let's go into edit mode and add in another bone, which will be the ear. Move the bone into position without rotating it to match the ear. If the ear is at an odd angle, it is important not to rotate the bone just yet. Select the bottom of the bone and press Shift S, cursor to select it. Our bone will be rotating at that pivot point from this point on. This is also where we are going to add the curve, as we want it to fit inside the bone as best as possible. Now add the curve, making sure the 3D cursor is at the bottom of the bone and position it just as in the previous example. To better align it, I zoomed in and pressed G to move the vertices and pressed X prior to moving the vertices to restrict it to the X axis. Rotate and scale the curve to where it is inside the bone and is about the same size. By clicking the pivot center box and selecting 3D cursor, we can now rotate the bone using the 3D cursor as the pivot point. Use this first rotation as a means of making sure the bone is the right size. 
If it is not, scale each accordingly. For this next step, we are going to move the bone and the curve one time on each axis until they are in the correct position. This is to help ensure the curve is inside the bone at this odd angle. These are not exact rotations and are not restricted to increments of 5 degrees. So make sure that you take note at the bottom left corner the exact angle because this is the angle you will give the curve. Now with the curve selected, begin rotating it and type in the angle that you gave the bone. Now repeat the process until both the bone and the curve match the ear. As with the Ford Kinematics tutorial, you may want to recalculate the bone roll using Control N. Now subdivide the bone until you're happy with the amount of bones. For these ears, I'm using only four, but depending on what mesh you're using, you may want more in your ear. Then use Control alt s to scale them so they are not as huge. Parent the first bone to the head so that it will rotate with the head during animation. Then play around with posing that first ear bone to make sure that it is the first bone in the chain. If it is not, you will need to flip over the ears just as it was done in the first tutorial. If you haven't already given the ear bones a meaningful name, do that now so that you can easily identify them later. The rest is just as it was in the Spleen IK demonstration. Add the Spleen IK constraint to the bone at the tip of the ear, and then for the target, select the curve that is inside the set of ear bones. Set the chain length to the number of bones in the ear. If the bones appear to shrink, that is because the scale is off and needs to be reapplied. Select the bones and press Control A, apply rotation and scale. Do the same for the curve. And then make sure you turn off Y stretch. Duplicate the top bone and remove any spleen IK constraints to it. Do not add a hook at this point. If you add a hook to the curve now, you will not be able to duplicate it later. The hook will apply to both the duplicate and the original, which means you will not be able to scale it to the opposite side. So duplicate the set of bones now and press Shift C to place the 3D cursor at the center. Use the 3D cursor as the pivot point and scale the bones to the opposite side. If the bones are missing, it is because the duplicates you created retain the original spleen IK constraint, which is set for the curve on the left ear. To fix this, just simply find the spleen IK for the right ear and switch the target to the curve on the right. You can also just remove the spleen IK from the bone and re-add it again later with the proper target. Now we can add the hooks to the curves and parent the curves to our control bones. If you haven't experimented with it yet, the right spleen IK still has Y stretch turned on, so here's what that looks like. The bones will stretch as far as we move our control bone, which is unrealistic for ears. Now on to the tail. Select the first bone in the tail chain and press Shift S cursor to center. Add the Bezier curve in as before. Fortunately for the tail, we are not working with any odd angles, so this one can actually be eyeballed. Just remember to apply the scales to both the armature and the curve and add the spleen IK just exactly as you did with the ears. the spine, we want to select our spine bone and duplicate it. This will be the IK bone we'll be using for this. Remove the parent from the spine IK bone. Now select the last bone in the chain and add an inverse kinematics constraint to it. For the target, select your IK bone. Now it is time to rig the eyes. The rig itself will vary depending on the placement of the eyes, but here is a basic rig that should fit most eyes. Select one of the eyes and press Shift S cursor to selected. We're going to add a bone in the center of the eye. 
Now shift A or use the add button to add in a bone. Rotate it horizontally. The tip of the bone should be about where the edge of the eye is. Then control alt S to thin out the bone. This will be the bone that the eye will be parented to. For the forward kinematics rig, we had the eye parented to the head bone. Now we are going to change that setup since we are rigging the eyes. Select the eye, then the eye bone, and press Ctrl P to parent the eye to the bone. Now duplicate that bone and place it in front of the face. This will be the bone that the eye will be tracking. Select both the eye and the eye target bone and press Shift D to duplicate them. Using Shift C, place the 3D cursor at the center, then use it as a pivot point. Then scale the duplicates to the opposite side. Then the median point selected as our pivot point, select both targets and press Shift S. We are now going to add in a third bone in the center. Now to make each target bone a parent of that third bone, make sure you keep the offset. This center bone will be used to control both eyes simultaneously, while also giving you individual control of each eye using the two children bones. Now select one of the target bones, then the respective eye bone, and press Shift I to add an IK constraint. Do this for both eyes. Now using keep offset, make each eye bone a child of the head bone. Now the eyes will once again move with the head. Now we have a basic eye rig. Now that we're nearly done, if you haven't already, duplicate the legs or anything else that needs to be on the opposite side, and then scale it along the x-axis. If you have a left or right designation, don't forget to flip the names using the armature tab in the header. You can also rework the number of segments for each bone in the Spleen IK setup in the bone settings and pose mode. Finally, Let's go over a parenting issue with our Spleen IK. When I move the mesh, the ears and the tail do not follow it. That is because they are following the curve which is not parented to the mesh. To fix this, let's go to the tail. Select the curve control bone and parent it to the pelvic bone. Then do the same for the curve itself. We want to parent each to that particular bone because the hook also needs to move with the mesh. Then do the same for the ears only this time parenting them to the head bone. That's it, now you have a basic IK rig for your character. For the next tutorial, we'll be working on custom bone shapes to help distinguish each bone during animation, as well as creating some shape keys and rigging those shape keys to your character. That's pretty much it. Hope you liked this tutorial, and I will see you next time.